was close. How did, how did you see it? I mean, the highs and lows of a, of a very emotional game, obviously, I think, from your standpoint. I think that uh, in the first period, we turned the puck over too many times. We were undisciplined with that part of the game, and that hurt us. And, uh, you know, I think the, the goals they score were totally on us. And I didn't think that we were playing the way we were capable of in the second period. I thought we t totally had it kind of go in our direction. But, uh, you know, we got our momentum. We started playing faster. We started skating better. But, uh, you know, we got ourselves back into the game. I think some lines picked themselves up. I thought that Booth and Panic played very well. And, uh, and you know, that line kind of helped us out a lot. But... Uh, the third period, you know, we got, came back out and we got ourselves in a position to win the game again. We're out by a goal. You got to play smart, smart and hard in those areas. And I think that, again, the, the goals were back on us again. But, I mean, other than the, the Weber power play goal, which I don't think anybody's going to see that with the traffic in front, I thought that the other goals were avoidable. And I thought we put ourselves in a position to win the game again in the third by playing harder the next two periods. And, we uh, let it go. So, you know, there's good and there's bad. There's areas where I thought we had emotionally, we came back and played harder in the second and the third. I didn't think we played emotionally hard enough and we were playing too slow in the first period. But, uh, you know, when you get in these highs and lows of games, it's the consistency that we need. We need the emotional high from the beginning of the game. And I'm not saying they weren't trying, but you're trying to do it individually. You're not playing with each other. So I thought we got better and we looked like we were playing the way we wanted to play and faster and forechecking harder and more pucks than that. And, uh, you know, again, we, we let them back in. Where did you thought the winning goal might have been more than her? She wasn't very happy about the play. Did you, did you see it that way? The, the, the one in the crease? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, he, that guy had a stick and pushed it. Was under, it looked like it was under the pad to me, and he poked it, and it popped out. So, you know, the referee has to make a decision if he thinks it's still loose. and. That's the prerogative of referees, so they, they're going to do that on their own call, right? But it looked like to me it was under his pad and he got pushed. That happens all the time. So The decision to uh, go back to Bernier? His, his game. You know, it was his start. It was his game. He'd, uh, you know, he had 12 stitches, but they said it was superficial and they had no problem going back in, and he came back, back out with ready to, ready to play, wanting to play. And so, you know, I felt like that kind of care, care and character of him wanting to get back in the game was important. So. Him being one of our leaders, I thought it was important to let him get back into his game. Were your turnovers the reason you flipped Kadri and Centerelli? Hundred percent. Did you see how Kadri responded? I thought that he came back out and played was one of our better forwards in the second and third period. I thought in the first period he might have been, you know, one of our worst forwards. And so, you know, playing that way, we can't play. We can't afford to play that way. They're, a, you know, have lots of structure in the neutral zone, and they they wait for that, and they're going to capitalize on that. So. You know, I thought there was a great response on his part, and that's what you want to see out of players. Top line, see, or the JVR Bozak Kessel line seemed to lack a bit of energy tonight. Is that a byproduct of the defensive matchup? Or? Uh, yeah, I think for sure. I mean, they they clearly had a hard matchup with with Gustad's line, and you know that's what he does for a living. He's really good on the faceoffs. He's a big man. They they're physical. They're heavy, and they're, they're not going to put themselves in any position other than being a good defensive position. So, you know, they did a very good job. How close did that Hutton save look to you on the replay? The one near the end where he seemed to just kind of make it out of nowhere? Uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. The one kind of with two minutes left? Or the, uh, the stick swipe. Yeah, the stick swipe. Uh, on, on Winnick, it went off Winnick's yeah. body. Yeah, the, the one that uh, hit him in the pants, it looked like it was in, and then yeah. it looked like we had another chance right after that. Yeah. And, you know, again, we're riding the highs and lows right there. I mean, I thought the bench kind of stood up and thought it was in for a second. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was close. Does the Kessel line have to find another way to, to generate offense, not getting as many of those chances off the rush? Right? Boys, yeah, I mean, uh, one of the ways is, is the power play's got to go better. Mm -hmm. I mean, we weren't very good. I mean, first right off the bat with our breakout, you know, the, they've got to do a better job there and get into the zone, and they've got to generate. When you've got a tight checking game, I mean, if you get into the playoffs against any of these teams that have good structure and defensive positioning, they're going to be tough to play against. So they're going to make it hard on you, and they're going to have a hard match in their building and, and you're going to have to fight through that and find ways to score in your power play and so that's what we, we, we need in that situation but uh, I think it made it difficult because we didn't get up and get set in the zone.